Chantilly Lace, and the Big Bopper. Hello, baby. The Big Bopper uh, wrote Chantilly Lace and died in an airplane crash with Buddy Holly and Richie Valance on February the 3rd of 1959. I did an autopsy of the Big Bopper about three years ago. Oh, baby, you know what I like. Chantilly lace and a pretty face. Chantilly. The plane crashes outside of Clear Lake, Iowa. They were on their way to Mankato, Minnesota. And they leave in the middle of the night in a blinding snowstorm. Should not have been flying. Pilot error. The pilot got confused and literally flew into the, to the Iowa farm field. The, of the four people of the Big Bopper, a man named Giles Perry Richardson, uh, Richie Valance, Buddy Holly, and the pilot, were four of them in the plane. The only one that exits the plane is the Big Bopper. He was sitting in the left rear seat of the Beechcraft Bonanza, and it crashes, skids across the field, stops at the fence row, and the Big Bopper is thrown out of the plane and lands on the other side of the fence. So when they find the wreck, the Big Bopper is out of the plane. About two months after the crash, the Iowa farmer is out cleaning up airplane parts out of his field so he can plant his crop. And he finds a 22 caliber pistol that had been fired a couple of times. This pistol was owned by Buddy Holly. The Richardson family has yearly gets togethers, and they um, have often wondered, I think this would be natural of families, I wonder if our loved one survived the crash and was he going for help. Years go by, 48 years. One night the phone rings and it's the bopper's son. And he tells me the little story I've just told you. And he says, the Texas Historical Commission has commissioned a life-size statue of my father to be placed at his grave. He said, we cannot accept this unless we cue my father because my father is buried in the horizontal marker section of the cemetery, so he can't put above ground monuments there. And if we accept this marker, we're gonna to have to move him from the horizontal marker section to the monument section of the cemetery. He said, and then he told me the two things that I've just told you. Did my father survive the crash? And was he shot? And he saw me on television one of the TV shows, and he wanted to know, he said, you know, you look like an honest person. Would you do an autopsy of my father? And I said, sure. I mean, so to make a long story short, we went down there. It's been three years ago now. And we exhumed him. And um, he was in remarkably good condition. His son was there when we opened the casket. You could look at the Big Bopper and look at the son and see that they were related. I mean, he was, of the eight or ten that I've done exhumations, I mean, dig up the coffin and open the coffin, by far the best preservation of any I have looked at. Now, I went down there to measure little bones and teeth and so forth, and I thought, gee, I can't dismantle this guy in front of the family. So we have to change. I said, okay, I said, okay, let's do this. Let's do an x-ray autopsy of him. The son did the same thing. He said, you know, I've never seen my father except in two dimensions, a picture of him. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, here he is in three dimension. Mm -hmm. And while we were getting the x-rays set up and all that sort of stuff, um, he pulled up a chair and sat down beside the casket. And he didn't talk out loud, but, you know, it was obvious that he communicated with his father for about an hour. We got the body out of the casket. And what we did, we x-rayed from the top of the skull to the bottom of the feet. And he is fractured. 
from the top of the skull to the bottom of the feet. There are probably 200 fractures in that body. Both legs broken across. And um, fractures of the skull and the face and so forth. There's no way that he could have survived. And there's no indication of a gunshot wound. So I was able to answer both of them.